now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Torrance, California, does hereby commend, honor, and congratulate Leroy J. Jackson for his dedication, professionalism, and contributions to the City of Torrance. A virtual standing ovation for a man whose legacy withstands 54 years of commitment and service to the city of Torrance. We are deeply impacted by what Leroy Jackson has given to us. Uh, he just uh, has a work ethic uh, that has no ends. Uh, he will be here early in the morning to late at night and, and leads by example. And it's not just an example, as I said, to the employees, but also to the elected officials and also to the community. Jackson, who moved to Torrance in the mid-1960s with his wife Connie, both from Ridgecrest, California, built not only a legacy for the city, but roots in Torrance, raising six children through the decades. But somehow we fell in love with Torrance, and Leroy in particular grew deep, deep roots and I am never going to get him out. <laughs> uh, he started and he didn't have any desk, so he stood at a file cabinet in personnel, and he read all the folders. And that got him a lot of knowledge that helped him immensely in the following years to come. Hi, I'm Leroy Jackson. I'm city manager at the city of Torrance. Sometimes we get ahead of ourselves, so we tend to take action and then ask for input. But we'd ask that you open the matter up, you encourage citizen or, or employee input, telling on which commission it is, and you listen to that input before you take action. Jackson began as a personnel analyst in 1966, eventually working his way up to city manager in 1983. Serving 37 years in that role, he is only the fourth CEO to lead the city, helping to maintain its core values, traditions, and shaping a community that touts nearly 150,000 residents, close to 2,000 employees, and an operating budget of more than $330 million. During his tenure, Jackson has worked worked with eight mayors, countless department heads, and has become a wealth of knowledge and resource to the community. Many call him the boss, but more affectionately, their friend and mentor. There was always opportunity to grow, not necessarily uh, big promotions and what have you, but mentally in assignments. And um, I did enjoy working for Leroy, and that's when you enjoy where you work, that's, and who you work for, that's a blessing. Working for Leroy personally, sitting within 10 feet of his desk for 20 years has been my honor. I couldn't have asked for a better mentor, friend, confidant, when I'm struggling with something, with either a, a work product or family, I bounce the ideas off of him that I'm having, or I just go in and vent, and he lets me. He always has a, a clever thought, and he somehow always turns it around that if I went in crying, I come out laughing, and I come out stronger. When I think about how Leroy has managed crisis and how he's actually made us stronger through crisis, number one is he understands his people and he allows them to be the best at what they do. So in times of crisis, Leroy uh, pauses and says, who's the right person to handle this and this and this? And he sets expectations and then he gets out of their way. I would say the other attribute that Leroy demonstrates that has allowed us to weather storms is he is people first. He is constantly thinking about the individual, whether it's individual employees or the individuals in the community. His decisions reflect this awareness that while we can make sterile and numbers-based decisions, those decisions ultimately impact people. And that's what's in the forefront of his mind as we move forward um, and make decisions in difficult situations. He has a way of rationalizing it that's uncanny. I would say that recommendation makes no sense to me. 
and he would somehow be able to draw either from another project or draw from a personal insight or explain it based on what was going on in current events. And so you would leave saying, oh, that's why they went that way. He was very good at that, at making you feel like once the recommendations came in, we had to implement them the best way we could and that they made sense. And Leroy is very genuine. He doesn't pretend to be anyone he's not. He doesn't try to fit what would be a perception of a CEO or he doesn't want to fit into what is the fashion statement of the day. Uh, Leroy enjoys his boots, enjoys his suits, enjoys that his wife cuts his hair, and that's Leroy. Jackson has always had a deep appreciation for history, many referring to him as a walking encyclopedia of Torrance. And over the course of his time leading Torrance to become fiscally sound, safe and secure, and one of the most desired cities to work and live in, he's held his position with modesty, transparency, and integrity. Jackson has always held dear to him the values of working as a public servant, imploring the ideal that all city employees are custodians of something truly special. He chose a kind of department head that reflected his values. Um, and I think that those values will continue through the executive staff. And I think those values are important to the city, to the community, as well as to the, to the electeds. You know, Leroy's wrote a lot of chapters in the history of Torrance. And when time comes, years to come, they, they will have a big place in that book for, for Leroy's incredible leadership on all these things, including this build that's behind us. Uh, Leroy was instrumental in making staff get involved in this. And, but he did that with so many other things. There's so many things that uh, I know that Leroy, just leaving the city and feeling to himself, he didn't get it all done. And, and I, I have to tell him that he's done an incredible job. So never, don't, I want him never to feel that he didn't accomplish all the things he thinks he could have done. Leroy has shaped our city. And even though he's leaving, we have the Leroy legacy. So he's built a framework which has shaped our city. He has people in place. People know the Torrance way. And it's through this way that we will continue going forward and we will always be moving in the right direction because that's the foundation that he laid for us. So he will still be here. And in that foundation, the balance of work and family life has always been a top priority, never missing a moment in any of his six children's special events at school as a father and now as a grandfather and great-grandfather. He always put family first. And I think he, well, I don't think, I know that he encouraged us to do the same. And, uh, you know, the city will be there after you take care of your family. And uh, so I think he found a good balance between taking care of the family uh, and uh, running a big and productive city like the city of Torrance. I've been here 20 years with them. I hope to be here for another extended period of time. I said, you're going to have a 100-year impact on this community. Uh, and that's, that's unique. I think it's unheard of. During Jackson's last virtual meeting as city manager, a man who is known to shy away from the spotlight was the center of much deserved attention as many tuned in to watch and listen. Jackson shared heartfelt thank yous with the mayor and city council along with his executive team for their support through the years. Mayor and council, I thank you so much for these years you've allowed me to serve this city and for all of the opportunities open to me. Connie and I have had our lives and our careers so intertwined with Torrance. It is a part and parcel to who we are. Our first son was born just three days after my first day with the city. Each of our six children became part of the city hall. I deeply enjoyed my career with the city and have been blessed with knowing and being mentored by Edward J. Ferrero, my predecessor, and being part of his executive staff. All the department heads I work with, Jack McKinnon, Chief Lucas and Sloniker, Chief uh, Koenig, Glenn Kirkcroft, Carrie Van Bellum, and others, each helped me along the way, voices from the past. 
there also has been my staff, Liz Rojas, Dan McLean, Kathy Keene, Brian Sunshine, Michael Smith, Ellie, Dom, Jay, Katie, Jill, Zelma, Kathy, and Kim, and so many others now and across the years. They were all were and are the hardworking team that made this office of city manager and me shine. I'm so proud of the organization I have managed. The city family met all challenges and constantly served council and our citizens through tough years and good, through crisis and opportunity, and through ever-happening challenges. The last six months have been proof in the pudding of their ability to step up to cyber COVID, civil unrest, and financial crisis. With Rom, this team will carry you and the community in and through the challenges of the future. As always, I share with you how much of who I am is family. My spirited partner, Connie, my children have all been and are part of who I am. And so, I close wishing all of Florence the best and knowing the best is yet um, Thank you. While traditional retirements of this nature would allow for hugs, handshakes, and group photos, this year's pandemic limited the social interaction that would have otherwise held a standing room only for the outgoing city manager. The council surprised Jackson by dedicating his last day on the job as Leroy Jackson Day in the city of Torrance. Mr. Jackson, uh, on behalf of my colleagues on the council, uh, the seven mayors, uh, elected mayors that preceded me and all the elected officials that have served with you, and I say it with you, uh, congratulations. But uh, at this time, my colleagues and I have a surprise proclamation that we would like to present to Mr. Jackson. Do hereby proclaim September 30th, 2020 as Leroy J. Jackson Day in the city of Tarn. And I ask the entire community to join in this celebration as we applaud Leroy's 54 years of continuous service and 37 years as city manager. On behalf of the city council, we wish Leroy the very best in his retirement. Presented this 22nd day of September 2020. He leaves a legacy that's unique to the individual. I think everyone has a unique perspective about his legacy. The one that strikes me the most that's personal to me is his um, small town, uh, aw shucks, uh, personality that he brings to a very, very important position. Why that is such a legacy for me is because there's a humility that he carries in everything that he does. And that humility is a thread uh, in the decisions he makes. It takes the ego out of it and boils it down to what's truly important. Aside from Jackson's famous cowboy boots and gentle disposition, his legacy and profound impact on Torrance will be written in the history books for many generations to know. Charles Grant is one of the few people who can say his job of 32 years is a walk in the park and truly mean it. When I first started here in 1988, I was the young 22 year old and uh, the elder statesman basically called me the kid and now in 2020 I am the elder statesman. Although now a father himself, he's still young at heart when it comes to making sure the playground is safe for kids in the community. I like kids to be happy, I like to see them play. They'll get a kick out of me being so tall. While this gentle giant still runs into park regulars, because of COVID restrictions, he doesn't see kids around the playground these days. Instead, he spends much of his time making it clear to visitors the equipment is off limits. With gyms and other gathering places closed, he takes his role seriously when it comes to keeping the park clean and safe for Torrance residents to recreate. There are 34 parks in the city of Torrance and Charles oversees five of them. He believes each one is an extension of his own backyard. Well, get here at 6 a.m. in the morning. We'll go and start with the bathrooms, start with debris, check our play equipment, make sure it's safe, 
make sure there's no hazards, which is very important, like glass or broken trees or broken branches or something down um, that the public can get injured on. The work that Charles does and all of our park services folks do, from my eyes, I think they're heroes. Most of the work they do is so quiet and so understated and so important to the community. Millions of people come to the parks every year and it is these few guys and gals, only about 30 people, 30 to 40 people who manage 34 parks and all of the amenities, all of the playgrounds, hundreds of trash cans, um, 200 plus acres of grass, every edge that you see cleaned, every surface you see cleaned, every bathroom you see cleaned, really all the pest control that is done, all the trees, over three, over 4,000 trees that are taken care of. And because of COVID, Grant and his team have doubled down on the cleaning. It has really changed the way we do business. We spend a lot of time with cleaning surfaces, making sure the bathrooms are clean, clean one, at least once, but sometimes twice a day and also the drinking fountains. Any place that there's touch points, we focus on those points and make sure they're clean. Occasionally, Grant is required to go beyond his job description. He recently spotted a man in the park down and went to his aid. Charles was able to get through the fence and be able to pick the man up, get him upright, and get him uh, connected with his family who was in the house. Also got him into the car so that they could immediately take him to the hospital. Charles probably saved this guy's life. But to Grant, it's all part of a day's work. If you enjoy it and you make it enjoyable, it'll be a wonder, it's a wonderful job. Any job can be, you know, wonderful, but you have to enjoy it. You have to really put yourself into it. Grant's backyard may be a little bigger than most people's. His Labor Day wish is that others will see the parks as their backyard too. Having three small children, homeschooling becoming the new norm, I took a leave of absence from my corporate job and really wanted to find something to do that I could incorporate my family while still being a homeschool parent. Natalie Buther's 20-year experience in corporate sales came in handy when she launched her small business called Party in My Yardy in June. I saw all these folks having graduation parades and birthday parties and drive-by gender reveals. And I thought this is a great opportunity to really focus on not canceling celebrations and canceling birthdays, but let's celebrate in a different way that's safe and that people feel comfortable. With the help of her two daughters, they've been making and staking signs for dozens of customers, including one she says she'll never forget. We did a sign for a 95th birthday for somebody's grandma, and she's in an assisted living facility, so because of COVID, she wasn't able to come out and visit with her family in person. So we set up the sign, Happy 95th Oma, and we faced it to the nursing home. So she was able to come to the window, and her family was all standing outside with her on the speakerphone, and she was crying and, you know, thanking them through the window. And so it was really special to see something that we could create such a memory for her when it could have been a terrible celebration for her being being away from her family. On this day, I got to meet Natalie and her kids outside of the Torrance Police Department, where they donated this special sign that says, Heroes Wear Badges. They are our heroes, and now more than ever, we need them, and they need our support. 12-year-old Maddie and 10-year-old Logan say they help their mom to make sure every sign is flawless. Sometimes I like think, oh, this doesn't look good. Oh, maybe we should move it there. Like for a 10 year old, they could do like a perfect 10, like that. She, she pays, pays us with dinner. Dinner, food, <laughs> whatever, um, a roof, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all kidding aside, the girls say they're motivated by their mom who took a giant leap of faith to start a new business that allows them to spend more time together. I tell her how proud I am of her all the time because starting from scratch like that is such an amazing thing. We're very proud of her and thankful that she puts a roof over our head. We love you so much. Love you. Natalie says this has been a very different type of work environment, but she wouldn't have it any other way. To be able to participate in a way that brings people excitement and brings joy to them, it's been super fulfilling, more fulfilling than I could have ever imagined.